Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested.com here at CES 2017. And one of the first booths I want to stop by is here at Full Spectrum Laser. This is Nick Barr, you're the marketing manager. You guys have a new product you guys announced and are shipping. It's a hobby laser. Absolutely. Tell me about the Muse. The Muse is our newest hobby laser. We've been making hobby lasers for about seven years. Uh, this is our newest run, it's state of the art. It comes with a new touch screen control camera and new control system. And it's really going to change the makerspace market as an available hobby laser. Tons of great features, um, aluminum, excuse me, uh, steel control, aluminum um, brackets on the inside, exhaust fan, we got everything we need for, uh, for a hobbyist here. Now, let's talk about the market for hobby lasers. We've seen over the past couple of years, a lot of people are more interested in doing things in maybe a makerspace or even a home office uh, and are looking at a laser they can buy. It's affordable, a couple thousand dollars. This is a $5,000 unit. Um, what differentiates a hobby laser from like a big laser that you guys also sell? We also sell these uh, large pro machines. The biggest difference is uh, power. This is a 45 watt power uh, laser tube. This is a 90 watt laser tube on our pro machines. Uh, the size and compatibility as well. This is a very small machine, can pack up everything within inside, move from space to space, take it into a maker space, move it into your garage, bring it in from the kitchen, exhaust out the fan, out the window. It's really got a, it's, I don't want to say it's a Swiss Army knife of laser cutters, but really can do anything for any type of space. So if it's in an education space and you have a bunch of them in a row, that's great. If it's just sitting in the corner of your garage to work, that's also great too. This works everywhere. Now the two primary features of a laser we talk about are the power. So you have a 45 glass tube laser and your bed is how big? It's a 20 by 12 working area in a glass uh, tube CO2 laser. And then how deep can you uh, cut? How much your depth? Uh, we can cut up to a half inch uh, material with the um, the 45 watt tube um, for all organic materials like your wood. Uh, some woods are a little bit more difficult that are applies with the glue, but as long as it's a solid piece of wood, quarter inch is not a problem. And then anything organic, uh, whether it's um, you know wood, paper, cardboard, that's all fine. And then acrylics, we can go up to a quarter inch as well without a problem. Um, we could probably say a half inch on acrylic, but safely it's probably safer to say a quarter inch because some acrylics, again, are a little more dense than others. But a quarter inch acrylic, we have no problem with it all in this machine. Now, if you're designing a laser to be used at the home, the safety is going to be huge important yeah, thing. Is that one of the reasons you guys have a steel enclosure? Do you have sensors inside? Like, what are the, the, the what are the safety functionalities? So, if any of the things that require for the laser to work aren't going on, i.e., if you lose your water, you'll hear the beeping there, uh, and you see you also have an indication here on the screen that your water's not pumping through. If your air's not pumping through, again, you pinch holes. Uh, alarm goes off, and any time the door's not open, water's not going through, coolant, air, you have an alarm and, a, and a display on the touch screen here, in which case, when you try to fire a laser, it just won't work, it'll come down and say, hey, your water's not running, hey, your air's not running. It's a really intuitive thing, so there's not a lot of guesswork. Uh, with a lot of lasers we've noticed, especially with our bigger machines and our old hobby laser, a new person to this machine has a lot, a big learning curve, you know, has a lot to learn when you first get to your first laser. We try to take out all of those things. We try to make the easiest workflow and the most intuitive display and this, this, this intuitive design we could so that as you walk into the machine, even if it's just your first time, with a lot of confidence, we feel like anyone could drag and drop a file into our software, send it to the machine, and run their first job. I see air exhaust, but you also have water in and air in. What are those being used for? So the water coming in and out cools the tube. Uh, what this does is increases the length, uh, sorry, the, uh, the life of the tube exponentially. Um, it's the same as uh, keeping oil running in your car, keeping it nice and cooled, runs very efficiently. Also keeps the power of your laser tube at its peak and maximum height. When a laser tube gets um, worn and old or gets too warm, you actually start losing power at an exponential rate. So this cooled water actually keeps the laser running at peak performance the entire time your job's running. And the air in is at the... the air in assist is uh, right at the laser head and what that does is it keeps a steady airflow at the point of attack, so as the laser's cutting, it keeps debris and other things away from the cut line, which keeps your cut lines extremely accurate. And those are all built in so when you buy the package? Absolutely, absolutely included. We've also included in the, um, the inner software of the saying, we have what's called a smart tracking, which lasers typically when they go, they make a corner and they, they have a little bit of a hot spot at the corners. Our laser actually stops at the corner, does a little loop, and then goes back to the other line. So we have the tiniest little loop on each corner, which keeps our corner um, markings, even on letters for um, etching, very, very clean. All your cuts as well be very, very clean with the new um, smart tech, only because of with the straight lines and the vectors on an SVG file, the laser's just manipulating the XY coordinates. As it takes those intersecting points, you're not ever gonna have a double over spot, or even if it crosses, the laser will actually turn itself off when it's crossing over itself, so you don't have double markings. Now, in terms of the tube and lifespan, uh, you're gonna increase lifespan with that cooling, but what is the expected lifespan of your tube, and how much is that consumable gonna be you know, after a couple of years or when you need to replace it? After a couple of years, you'll probably have to replace the tube 
we'll, we'll call it 2,500 hours on the tube right now, but really we've had people go three and four times that with their 45 watt tubes. It's a $500 replacement. That includes a new warranty on the tube as well though. So that's shipped to you, $500. And you basically have another two years of your machine working, uh, which is a $500 upgrade. Well, not even an upgrade, just a replacement. And I also noticed you guys have a camera system there. You guys are also taking oh, pictures right. of the bed. What are you doing with that? And how are you combining those images? So the this is one of the most, in, I'd say the most impressive parts about the camera feature, it takes nine photos of the bed, which increases our, um, the number of pixels we've collected. So when it creates a bitmap for tracing or alignment, we have the maximum amount of information as we can get from the thing. What it, those nine pictures takes, it automatically seems, uh, seamlessly patches them together. Obviously with a uh, camera close to the thing, it's gotta be a wide angle. So what we do is we crop within the, the warped areas of the wide angle lens, and that's where we stitch in between. So you get a pretty seamless uh, stitch across the bed uh, for alignment. And I'll see Ethernet port, there's USB port. You plug in your computer, how do you control all this? Because I also see a screen here. Absolutely, so you have a touchscreen control here. We can do all your functions that you would normally be able to do from our other control on the card, as well as run old jobs on the LCD. Um, your computer connects via um, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, or USB. And as long as your computer's connected, you have access to the software, which actually lives on the machine. So you don't need to be connected to the internet by chance, but as long as you're connected to the machine, you have the software available on your um, browser. And in that software, you can import designs, bitmaps, absolutely. vectors, you can do some design work as well? Oh, absolutely. You can do a ton of design work. We have preloaded shapes for uh, vector uh, cutting and marking, but you can drag and drop any file type you like. You can design in DXF, SVG, PDF, JPEG. You can take a picture of yourself on the phone, send it to the machine on your phone if you wanted, and etch yourself that you just, the picture you just took that easily. Um, and then once your job's there, you can just go to your previous jobs on your LCD screen and run jobs before. So if you were someone who were running Let's say you were making a lot of crafts, either Christmas time or you had a little Etsy shop. You could just have you know, your four jobs you normally run and not need a computer at all. You just come to the machine, pick the job you want to run, and run it right from there. Nick, that's super exciting. I know you guys are shipping these already. I would love to get one in the test. Hobby lasers are really exciting for us, uh, and thank you so much. We'll have one to you as soon as you want one. You say the day, we'll have it there that day. You heard it from Nick. So we'll do more testing on the Muse from Full Spectrum here at CES 2017, and we'll see you guys in the future. Bye.